did you do? Um, well, I don't know what did it now. I like banana.
satisfy the, the hunger and longing for God's children to live. Um, the Bible is full of stories that we could talk about this morning. Now, I thought about the Hebrew wars in the fiery furnace. I thought about Daniel in the lion's den. I thought about Paul and Silas in the, in, in the prison. And that's one of my favorite stories, yes. Paul and Silas. That's one of my favorite stories. I thought about that. But there's so many of the lady at the well. So many great stories in the Bible. Yes. And the Bible stories are so true. Yes. And once you get in, in, involved in the, in the reading of, of God's yes. word, it almost comes alive. Mm -hmm. Right in your face. Yes. Right? You feel like you were part of all that's going on. And this one, I feel like I was, I, I, I was in the, the, the midst of Daniel and the, and, 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 and the lion's den and the Hebrew boys and the fiery friends. I can't imagine that the king looked in that prison and said, didn't we put three guys in there? Well, I see four guys in there all walking around loose. Daniel and the lion, then when the king walked up to Daniel and the lion, they said, Daniel, is your God enough to save you? Uh, I'm, I'm ad 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 And he said, oh yeah, king, and he forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My God yeah. is able to deliver me. Yeah. Even from the mind. He said, he shut the, the mouth of the lions, mm -hmm. and there's no hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he, the Paul the Silas in that fiery furnace at midnight, and, and they began to pray and sing praises to God, and the, 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 the Bible say that the foundation of the prison shook mm -hmm. and all the cell doors were open. Yes, sir. They all could have went free. Mm -hmm. But you know God don't have runners. Mm -hmm. He don't, don't have nothing for the back. So we, we, we're not runners. We have to endure whatever hardships and trials and tribulations yes. we go through. Yes. And, and part of the side of the bed and the, the, the jail woke up out of sleep and in haste and in a rush and looked to see all the doors open and called for his servant to bring me a sword that I could kill myself. Mm -hmm. And those guys in that jail cell said, How do that stuff no harm, sir? Yes. We're still here. Yes. We're not afraid of what you can do to us mm -hmm. because God is out delivering that man. Yes. And you can't do nothing to us if God says so. Yes. That's right. And they stayed. The jail was so impressed. By these, these guys and, and, and all they went through and all that they did, but they didn't run from adversity. They didn't run from their trial and tribulation. In fact, they was all beaten half dead and everybody wondered why are they why did they get up and run out of there? But the general was so enthused, he ran in there, fell down on his knees at them and said, Sirs, how can I give some of what you got? Mm -hmm. How, how can I get the salvation that is so rich and free? And they replied, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's powerful stuff. Yes, it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But he didn't stop there. Did you know the best part of that story? They said, in the house. That's my part of that story. In the house. You know, the head of the home is the, is, is the man. Yes. So when the man gets saved, naturally God brings his family right in with him. Yes. Because he's the household head. And so everything else follows the headship. Yes. When I got saved, man, I couldn't wait to run and tell somebody. Mm -hmm. I ran to the phone. I was in, in Connecticut. I ran to the phone. And I dialed my sister on the phone. And gave my phone to my pastor to tell my sister about going to heaven. Mm. <laughs> Out at pastor school. And the, the, the wonderful thing about pastor school and, and, and Dr. Jack Howes, man, when he preached, he preached with authority. Mm. And all that sat there in, in those classes. And you, 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 you almost wanted to cry out, yeah, Lord! Yes. Come on! Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was just that intense that good. But when he talked to my sister, 
our Father Almighty God, I feel blessed. I feel lifted up and proud to be able to stand here this morning, dear God. Open up my heart and pray and thanksgiving. But more than that, dear God, I, I, I love talking about you. I love the fact that you are real and you are powerful and courageous and uplifting. And there's no wickedness in you at all, dear God. So this morning as I stand here, open up your word in the Bible. Talk about the great stories herein. I pray that you fill me with the Spirit of my God. I pray and ask this time, Lord, that you come down and sit in the midst of us. Fill the room with your presence, Almighty God. Help us to cling to you the more. Get away from worldliness and wickedness and evil and all those things, dear God. That you are not a part of. But as we call upon your name, we claim to be your children, Almighty God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, help us to live the Christian life that we ought to live, God. Doing the thing that pleases you, not cause you shame and reproach, Almighty God. But Lord, this one I pray that, that you fill me up today, dear God, and help me to do all to your glory and honor as you give me the utterance to do so. Dear God, we do know that your word won't return to war, but it will accomplish the mission for which it is intended. I pray that some souls be lifted up today, dear God. I pray that you bless this time and all that go on here right now, that you be glorified and uplifted. So I ask and pray, Lord, that you put the words in my mouth you have me speak, that I not make a mess of this time of your word in the Bible. So I ask and pray, God, that you feel me. And help me to speak that which you hear me to say. That I can glorify the name of you this morning. For I pray and ask that you bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, 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 I did find a, 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 a Sunday school lesson. But I, I feel like that God don't need me to talk about. Sunday school uh, 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 message this morning. I, I feel more like he said this. Pour out some heart to my people. Let them know your faith together and how it should be. Yeah. I had a privilege of one soul with me. Brother Pastor Tom yesterday and, and Brother Eddie. And we knocked off some doors and passed out some tracks and we had a good time. But there was one loudmouth brother that come out of this house and walk right down on, on God's servant, the spoken for God. And he was all loud and monstrous at first. And, ah, you don't know this and you don't know that. Ah. But he was talking to Pastor Tom, who is the servant of the Most High God. And Pastor Tom never stopped telling him the plan of salvation or all he had to say. But he did it in a meek and humble way. He was nowhere near as loud as the, the guy was we were talking to. And I watched this guy, Pastor Tom, get filled with the Holy Spirit. And he clinged to him so much that everything this guy had to say to, to them, God and all he is, he did it with, with power and substance. I stood there amazed. Y'all hear me? I stood there amazed at Pastor Tom yesterday. I, I, was, I was dumbfounded. He was so sharp in doing what God gave him to do. This guy humbled himself and shut up. Man, that just told me about him. Wow. The power of God. When God is out on somebody, there's nothing. Nothing. But the goodness of God come out of that somebody. Amen. Yesterday, Pastor Tom inspired me so much. I couldn't. When I, when I first looked at him, he, he was kind of like stumbling a little bit. And you know, that's kind of natural when you start out talking to somebody, especially when they're loud and over talking to you and all of that. But I watched that guy. His whole meaning changed. He began to listen. And everything that he was 
was saying against what Pastor Tom was saying that friends he almost agreed with. Mm -hmm. In fact, at the end of the conversation, he said, oh, uh, where's your church? I got to come visit y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. uh, that's too long. Yeah. Get quiet and down. I thought I hope the spirit worked in his 
shut up. Pastor <laughs> yes. Tom gave him something to, to keep with him all the time. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I, I saw so God working. Yes. So God working yesterday. Yes. You know, it's an awesome thing you can witness something of that nature. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome thing. You know, most, most, most folks think that God is somewhere when we do what we do for God, he's somewhere else. But no, he's not. The Bible says he's everywhere all the time. Beholding the evil and the good and send the rain upon the just and the unjust alike. He's everywhere, seeing it all. Yes, sir. I know y'all wonder sometimes, how come Papa always tell everybody about what's going on in his life? Because who am I hiding from? God already knew it. <laughs> so I can't hide I'm not hiding from nobody. He already knows what's going on. Where I stand. Amen. So when I tell folks about my wrong and all of that, it's because God knows. Amen. And the Bible says, confession of false one to another, that can, you pray one for another. I can't get your prayer, you don't know what to pray about. Amen. So when I tell you about, about my, my, my faults and all the stuff I'm going through, my trials and tribulations, I do it because I want to be blessed. Yeah. I need your prayers. Yeah. I, I, I need to be delivered from the junk. Transpires in my life in the course of the day. You know, I tell people all the time that I try to, I try not to anymore, but analyze people, see what they are all about. I sit back and just watch folks, see what they're made of, what they're all about. It's an awesome gift, I believe. Um, but sometimes I think it's, I, I, I think it kind of like uh, hinders too. Because when you, when you really think about people, and you think about the state of people and, and their well being, and you think about how are they really fixed when they're all alone by themselves? How are they really then? How do they measure up? To the word of God, and it's by itself, nobody's watching. And we be out in the morning, or, or, or late at night, or early in the morning. How, how do they measure up there? What are they? What are they like? Yes. All by themselves. And it's an awesome thing that that, that people always try to cover up their sins with, 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 with getting around other folks mm -hmm. that that's a little spiritual than they are. But it don't work. It, it never works. It really don't. Because the Bible says your sins will find you out. God's going to always reveal what you do wrong to somebody. Whether you know that or not, God is because the Bible says so. And we all know if God said that's it. No matter what people say, that's it. God's word is true. No fault, no lie in it. God's word is true. So I stop <clears throat> trying to see what people are all about. I'm trying to keep myself where I need to be. And that's a 24-hour job. It really is a 24-hour job. I know folks talk about me. I talk about everybody too. But I do it on my knees before God. I know folks look at me and wonder, why you don't, why you don't get hanging no more? Why you don't do this no more? Why you don't do that? Because I'm trusting God. And I do. I trust God. I, I really do. He had never once failed me in doing whatever I needed to do. And I can tell you this morning, I'm going to Sunday school yesterday. God said, I don't need that. Now, put that thing down. I got you. And he do. He really does. He got me. He got me. And the best part about him having me, I'm in the palm of Jesus' hand. And Jesus said, I'm going to put you in the palm of my Father there also. Now I got you all covered. Yes. There's, there's no stripping out of sliding away or none of that. I got you. Yes. And you know what? I much rather for God and Jesus to have me than anybody else. Yes. Because there is no way in the world I can fall on my faith that they're holding me in the palms of their hands. Yes. No way they're going to let me do anything I don't do no more. I love the fact that God is real. And he's faithful. Yes. Up with power. Yes. When that guy 
When I, when I read the Bible, not that guy, when I read the Bible, he said, He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't know if anybody watched this movie. I often talk about this movie. I'm talking about this one that I had there. The picture was called the, the, the King of the Harms. The King had a feast and invited all these barbarians to the feast. Except for their leader. So when the leader found out about the, about the party they were having, they were having a ball. Then when the king when, when the king of the heart found out, he bust, bust in the door and stood at the inside the door and this stood there looking at everybody. And the king asked his servants, who is that? What is his name? And the leader of the Han said, you ask me, you ask me what's my name? You ask me who am I? He said, I am the king of the Han. My name is Attila. At my voice, every one of these men in, in this crowd will stand up and bow to me. You know what I, 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 I when I think about God, that's how I think about him. Even the dead will arise if God says so. There is nothing that don't move. The trees and the leaves, the water, and the, the, the air will be, everything will move when God opens his mouth and talks. He said, even the rocks will cry. Now, you know, the, the God, somebody can make a rock cry. That's how good anything you can do. The rocks will cry. That's how great it is. When I think about God's greatness, I think about me going down in that ditch and coming out on the other side and go outside in the car. And I, I woke up in the, I come to myself in the jail cell pulling the mattress. And the, 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 the jailer telling me about being in the fight. So I had to kind of like kill myself to fight. Man, it's like, and I ain't beat up drunk. I can't fight drunk. Drunks don't fight. He, I felt my face and everything. I wasn't all past the right man. Couldn't have been much of a fight. But that ain't hurt. I ain't beat up. I'm not sore, none of that. And when I got saved, I thought about God and his protection. Wow. I must have worked my angel all the time. I had to. Because there's some things I shouldn't have walked away from. I'm, I'm here testifying about I shouldn't be here. I really should. But God is good. Yes. And I know that he prepared me back then for such a time as this right here. Yes. Man, yes. To open my mouth and tell the world how great is God we serve. Yes. Man. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, have everlasting life. I'll leave us with that. <coughs> Amen.